Well, it's quarter after five. There was a big moon right there and I just missed it. I had to go to the bathroom when I came back, it was gone. Crap, it was really pretty. Ah, oh, man, that sucks. <laughs> Well, it's 5.23 a.m. on Monday, uh, August 3rd, I believe. It's a holiday. Um, just boiling some water for my oatmeal and uh, getting ready to start the day and uh, head out today. Happy to see I have fresh Niagara peaches in my oatmeal this morning. That should be yummy. It is raining a little bit, I think. I can't tell if it's actually raindrops or if it's just like coming from the trees. Uh, I think it might actually be rain rain, but oh well, it's not as cold as it's supposed to be, so that's good. Well, it hasn't rained like, I think it stopped at midnight and hasn't rained all night and uh, just finished making my uh, oatmeal, boiling the water for the oatmeal, and uh, just started pouring. <laughs> so I've um, got my rain pants on over top of my pants. I don't know if I'm going to need them if it's going to be that uh, chilly, um, but it's miserable paddling six hours in the rain. So I'm um, going to leave them on for now. It's very easy for me to put them away. And uh, I'm going to start packing up in the inside of the tent and... Uh, Hopefully it stops raining before it's time to head out. Well, Mr. Loon has wished me a good morning. Shortly after the rain started, the rain stopped again. I'm just finishing up my oatmeal. Almost done packing up the tent. And uh, should be headed down to the canoe very shortly. The sky is clearing up. The lonely loon on my lake. It is uh, 20 after 6 and I am down by the boat. Just about to turn it over and put it in the water and load it up. I figured uh, once I flipped it and that it would be too hard to film after so I thought I'd just do my uh, little thing now. I've got my bags there carefully placed so they don't roll in the lake this time and um, I think I'm ready to go. I'm a little bit nervous this morning uh, the very first thing and the only difficult thing that I know of on my way out today is the White Rock Rapids. Um, I have been contemplating all weekend if I'm going to try to run them or not. Uh, when I talked to Mike, who's the guy whose family um, I spoke to who told me that the river was open, um, he said it shouldn't be a problem. He said just stay to the left um, and avoid the, the white water, right? Um, I can steer the canoe fairly well. So um, I think I might try it. I might get to that point where it's like the really rough part and I might just get out and line it. Um, we just have to see how I feel about it when I get there. After that, I've just got a lot of paddling to do. I think there's uh, 17 to 20, 27 kilometers, something like that of paddling today. Um, but I am with the current in the river, so supposedly that's gonna speed it up a little bit. Um, it is 6.30 as I said, so uh, you know, if I get out by 12, 31 o'clock, uh, I'd be happy with that. So, um, looks like the sky has cleared up mostly. The rain has stopped, so that's good. And the wind died down quite a bit. It was pretty windy last night. Um, and it was really rainy. So, um, hopefully everything is in my favor. I would love to see a moose on the river today. Fingers crossed. And, uh, I've got my fishing rod out to do some fishing if I find any good spots. Anyways, I'm procrastinating now. I'm gonna get going and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Well, as I make my way towards the White Rock Rapids, I'm extremely anxious. <laughs> um, I've run a few small rapids, uh, just like, more, more like swifts than rapids. Um, supposedly this is a class two. Uh, I did walk the boat through on the way in and actually paddled some of it up upstream <laughs> um, so I know where the rocks are um, and I'm pretty sure I know how to avoid them 
think I'm going to try to run them. Uh, if I get freaked out, then uh, I'll probably just pull over on the shore. I've got my rope out and uh, ready to go <laughs> in case I need to jump out quick and grab the canoe. So, all right, I'm just uh, beginning my approach to the start of the rapids. I've decided I'm going to go for it. Uh, I figured out a way to put the camera in my jacket, in my life jacket. Um, I don't know how good of a video it's going to make, but I'd like to try to film it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not the important part, but I figured why not give it a shot. Oh, there's the beautiful gigantic rock at the end of the rapids. <laughs> start for me <laughs> today. Okay. Hopefully I don't scream too loud. Mess up the video. <clears throat> this is just the easy part, so this will be a good test. <laughs> I actually paddled up this part, so not too bad. Okay, here we go. would be easier with a canoe paddle but I don't have one with me so I'm gonna have to wing it. That was the easy part. <laughs> I watched the videos last night of the uh, the footage that I took of the rapids so I could see, I guess they call it scouting them, <laughs> so I could see where I needed to go. Um, but again, they're just small, simple ones, so I just want this over with and my day will be good after this. <laughs> some easier ones before the end so if I have trouble going through those then I'll just scoot myself over to shore here we go I'm actually I'm actually using my stop to slow myself down a little bit <laughs> not in the way of the video too much, but I do need it. I have a lot of control with my canoe with this kayak paddle, so that's why I decided to do this. <laughs> Plus, I've seen several people through here. I know people are coming through here tomorrow, so if anything happens, I know there'll be people nearby. I have my beacon on me in my pocket. I've made a couple of modifications this morning to make sure that I can, uh, you know, rescue myself if I need to. All right, so far so good. Here we go. See the turbulent waters up there? Probably not high enough to see much. Okay, so I have to stay left here. Slow myself down. I don't need to do them going super fast or anything. <laughs> Just need to avoid that middle part. Okay, here we go. Paddle, paddle, paddle. This isn't bad at all. Duck under the tree. Paddle, paddle. <laughs> that was so easy. Oh my gosh. The camera, oh, the camera turned. I think I missed all that crap. That was so easy. That's it? That's, it. That's what I was worried about for three days. Oh man, what a joke. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. Oh, 
Right, now, originally when I came up here, I came from the left, but today I am going to the right. <laughs> that was so easy. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I was freaking out over that. Well, it is 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Just paddling through all these lily pads. Um, Oh, it's fun. <laughs> it wasn't even uh, as hard as I thought it would be. Um, I took all the precautions that I possibly could and uh, I was fairly certain I wasn't going to have an issue doing that, but uh, I was still anxious about it because it's something I've, I've never done. I've actually, um, now that I've gone through there, um, I did uh, accidentally did some rapids um, on my Twinkle Lake loop and uh, I didn't know they were coming. I knew they were going to be some swifts, but they were almost just like that, and uh, I ran them, although I smashed the canoe when I, I didn't smash the canoe, but I hit a couple of rocks on my way down. Um, this is a very, very strong canoe. Uh, that was another thing that Mike said, uh, the guy on the campsite that I talked to about, uh, who told me that I could go through the river. Um, he said, well, just make sure your boat isn't too heavy. And um, he said, as long as your boat isn't too heavy and it's really strong, and my boat isn't heavy. My boat is very light. My gear is very light. I mean, it could be lighter, but it's not extremely light, but it's light enough. I'm light-ish, and um, um, I know how to control the boat really, really well. Um, I have my beacon in my pocket. I secured my gear to my boat. Um, my car keys in my pocket. I have my uh, emergency stuff. I just packed my pocket this morning with a bunch of stuff. I have a raincoat on. Everything's fast and so if I did dump, hopefully it wouldn't get too wet. Um, I have a change of clothes in a Ziploc bag which is secured to the boat just in case. And uh, I have my fire making uh, stuff in my sports bra. So um, I was extremely prepared just in case anything did happen. Um, but uh, I'm good. I'm fine. And I'm super happy I, I did that. Now I can just paddle my rest of my day. I think uh, that section I just finished uh, was three kilometers. Um, so now I have, I don't know, like 24 kilometers left to paddle today. Well, I'm just passing the uh, entrance to the 400 meter portage, which is right there. Didn't even notice I was here already. And now I am starting a new territory, which is always exciting for me. It's part of why I love doing this, going to new places. So there actually is the sign for the campsite. And uh, Mike was telling me there's one that you go up a trail, a steep trail to the top. And uh, the campsite is up above. And uh, that is where that campsite was that I was thinking of coming to. Curious. Okay, on to this. Beautiful. And yes, there's a current, and my boat is just moving along without me even paddling. So nice. I think I'm going to really enjoy this day. Well, I did actually cast a few, and uh, this keeps happening. So, I am not here to catch the elusive weed fish. Um, so, I'll probably just paddle. A lot of weeds here. I should have fished right after I finished those rapids, but it was just too in my head about something else. <laughs> well, it's quarter to eight. <laughs> Spent the hat last, uh, I don't know, 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so fishing. Uh, I had a couple little bites. I had some hope and then nothing. Um, so. I gotta keep paddling. I'm starting to get really cold just sitting here, so I gotta keep moving. I'm also still looking for that moose. Well, I've just supposedly passed where the uh, second campsite is. I think there's three. Um, and uh, I don't see anything anywhere. This is all like, I don't know, blueberry bushes and alder bushes and swampy water. I can't, uh, can't imagine where a campsite would be in here because it's all like swampy like. Um, but there's one on the map and 
not in real life. Not the first time it's happened. Probably won't be the last. <laughs> well, I passed that other campsite. It actually did exist. It was a little farther down than it is on the map. There were two guys leaving from the site and they said it was awful. <laughs> so, just a note. <laughs> that second campsite is awful. Still making my way through the South Lady Evelyn River. Uh, I have the two fellows in the canoe behind me now. They are heading uh, towards Cabin Falls Way when they get to the forks. And I am going the other direction. Alright, still making my way down the South Lady Evelyn River. It's been, it's been good so far. I went over one wall. And the other one, there was a way around it, so I did that. Making pretty good time and um, should be at the forks in no time. Well, I'm back on my own again. I was just paddling that last little section with um, Stephen and Jory and uh, Collingwood. They are going um, down the South Lady Evelyn and they're going to be heading towards um, Cabin Falls and uh, all of those really cool waterfalls with the hard portages and um, they are uh, parked at Ferguson Bay. They took uh, the Lakeland Airways um, to uh, Florence Lake and got flown in and uh, they're paddling from Florence all the way down to um, Ferguson Bay. So that's really cool. I'm um, super excited for them. I'm sure they're going to have a great trip and they're going to have some really cool memories. Um, I am heading towards the North Lady Evelyn River and what they call the Forks, which is where the South and the North uh, join. Um, they're taking the shortcut through a, a portage and um, I am taking the water. So, um, yeah pretty fun. It was nice to talk to some people for a little while. Not usually uh, that great with seeing people out on the water when I'm out by myself and I don't usually see anybody out here. Um, but uh, it was very nice chatting with them. They seemed like uh, very nice people and uh, I hope they have a great adventure. Well, it's 20 after 9. I've just passed the marker um, actually where the guys turned off to take the shortcut portage. Um, I just finished another 6k so I've done 13 kilometers of paddling so far this morning since I left camp and I have another 13 to go before I get to um, the access at Gamble so I'm halfway far halfway through as far as uh, kilometers go uh, however um, I obviously went a little bit faster in this section because uh, I did have a current and a tailwind pushing me a little bit um, when I get to the forks, I'm going to be going up the North Lady Evelyn River. Um, so I might have a current there. In between Chance and Gamble, I have a bunch of swifts that I'll probably have to get out and put, pull the boat up through. I'm just munching on a granola bar. <laughs> Heard a little bit of uh, moving water in front of me. So I'm just have a little swift here. Something major. Uh, going with the current, which is great, moving me along quite quickly still. Um, I'm almost uh, through the that next three kilometers that I um, was talking about on the last video. I'm just paddling the last, uh, it's about a kilometer it looks like, um, before I get to the forks little waterway here. I really like it. It's nice and tiny and narrow. Just enjoying going with the current <laughs> for the last time before uh, I have to start paddling upstream on the north. I am just about at the forks where the North Lady Evelyn River and the South Lady Evelyn River join. Um, it's 9.38, so just over 10 minutes past 3 hours since I left my campsite on Jack Lake. And uh, when I get to the forks, it'll be another uh, almost
those three kilometers there that I've done. So, um, six, four, 10, 13, 16 kilometers. Um, paddled 16 kilometers in uh, the three hours. And I did a half an hour fishing, so. <laughs> If I didn't do the half an hour fishing, it would have been 16 kilometers in two and a half hours. Well, here's the split. And uh, I'm going to be going left now, up the North Lady Evelyn. South, South Lady Evelyn continues on this way, and I am going that way. I just need to tell my boat that <laughs> it wants to go. Follow the current. <laughs> All right. The sun is trying to peek out a little bit. It's still very cloudy, but um, a little bit thinner. It'd be nice if the sun comes out. Just uh, finished paddling 16 kilometers since I left my camp, and um, I have got another 10 left. 10 and a half, actually, left. take a small clip here. <laughs> um, I'm about halfway through the three and a half kilometer section between the Forks and the 1K Portage uh, that I took on Friday. Um, I am going up the river uh, against the current and I also have a bit of a headwind. So if I stop paddling to do anything like, you know, drink some water or film a clip. I mean, I've got it on my stick, so it's a lot easier. I just have to press a couple buttons. But um, anything else, I just start going backwards. <laughs> and I don't want to lose the uh, distance I've already gained, obviously, and, and have to paddle it over. So I just uh, got my head down, and I'm just knocking this out. And it's 10.15. Just passing by where that just uh, 11 o'clock now and uh, almost at Chance Lake. Uh, I have been battling a very nasty headwind all the way through the North Lady Evelyn River since uh, pretty much since the portage. Um, just after I passed the 1k portage entrance there I went around the corner and it was just so bad. I couldn't do anything. I just had to paddle hard um, non-stop. So, um, probably lost uh, some time there. I think uh, probably took me about a half an hour to paddle a kilometer in one section. It was just really, really tough. Um, I'm, I've still got a headwind here. Uh, not sure what'll happen when I get into Chance and uh, Gamble, if it'll open up or not and be worse, but um, so be it. <laughs> I'm just at the entrance of Chance Lake and uh, got that swift one of the few that I'm probably going to have to walk through. I did try to paddle up it, but I was set packing, so just going to uh, get out here and pull the canoe up on the rocks, uh, around the rocks over here, and then I should be good. My feet have been so cold all morning because it's chilly out, and uh, I go to get out and I get in the water, and I'm like, oh, the water is like warm, like a bathtub there by the swift. I was like, oh, I should have just stuck my feet in the water. Jeez, no clue. All right, I am paddling through, what's it called? <laughs> Chance Lake, I'm paddling through Chance Lake. And uh, supposedly I'm less than two kilometers from the excess now, according to the map. So I'm just gonna make my way through this last little section. And uh, almost there. on um, Chance Lake, but it's not nearly as bad as 
uh, when I was on the river there. Here comes another little swift. I'm probably going to have to pull the canoe through. If I can paddle up it, I'll try, but the water's really shallow and I can't get my paddle deep to get a good stroke in. for a minute and then I didn't think I was going to make it. Oh, uh -oh I have more. I know there's a couple more going through here. <laughs> oh, I made it through that one too. <laughs> it was a little, the one was smaller than the last one. I think that might be it. There was three. Oh, headwind swift. Ugh, tired arms. <laughs> Lunch time. Ooh. Well, I had one more to get through, and uh, this one I think is the longest one. I have no problem doing this. The only thing I hate about it is the rocks are so slippery. Current is flowing. You see it? I got a paddle up that too, see? Now my pants are wet. I was just saying how I was all like, oh, I just wear these in the car because they're dry. Ha uh -huh. ha. more. Right. Take a little scooter there. It's 11.30 and I am just about at the access on the Gamble Lake. Um, had a wonderful trip. Florence Lake is absolutely beautiful. If you've never been, you should go. Um, you can fly in by Lakeland Airways. Uh, it was very busy this weekend though, so um, you gotta keep that in mind. You cannot reserve campsites here. You can only book um, the lake. Uh, actually, you can only book the park. And you do have to reserve and pay for a permit uh, for this area. It's uh, um, Lady Evelyn Smoothwater Provincial Park. So uh, go through Ontario Parks website and uh, if you need the link, uh, just ask and I can send it to you. 
Um, great trip. Saturday was probably the highlight of the weekend. Uh, such a wonderful day. It was sunny, it was hot. Uh, I went and explored those caves. I heard the wolves howling in the morning. That was spectacular. That was so amazing to hear that. Um, I met uh, Mike and his family and uh, they also heard the wolves and they said they've, they've come to Florence Lake quite a few times and they've never heard them. So that was a really, really good treat. Um, it was a beautiful day. I got to go swimming, sit in my hammock, ate lots of good food. It was just a great day. And then, uh, you know, um, today finding out that I could go on that route uh, the way that I wanted to go out and skip those portages was awesome. I don't think I would do it differently. Um, the way that I came in, uh, doing those two portages, I think um, was better, even though the 400 meter was horrible and it took me, oh my God, an hour and 15 minutes, it took me longer than the 1K. The 1K is beautiful, but the 400 meter was just really, really hard. Um, but part of me liked that. I, I liked the challenges here in Tomogamy and I loved, I loved that portage as much as I hated it. So, um, but going in the way that I came out today, I don't know if I would do that um, going in normally because uh, you're against the current the whole time and there was quite a bit of a current on that river. So it would have been a, a hard 17 kilometers of paddling through that. I don't know if I would have liked that. So um, it, it probably takes quite a lot longer to get through uh, going in that way than it did going out. But anyways, um, and then uh, meeting those two people today too, um, Stephen and Jory. That was really cool too. Um, met a lot of really nice people this weekend. Uh, I got to chit chat with so many great people. Um, Smooth Water Outfitters, you know, Johanna and Fran are great. Got to talk to them. My friend Molson, I found out the same day was gonna be there, just randomly. Um, so we got to hang out for a bit on uh, Thursday night and I uh, got to talk to John Kilbridge and talk canoes with him and talk about tomography and stuff. So that was amazing too. So um, it's been a really, really uh, incredible weekend. Um, I feel extremely grateful to be able to do what I do and to go to all these great places and see all these wonderful things. Um, somebody left a comment on my one of my um, videos. I think it was the Twinkle Lake series and they said, to see what your eyes have seen. And I just thought that was such a cool thing to say. Like, it really touched me. And thank you to whoever left that comment. Um, I did reply, I reply to all my comments when I can. Um, sometimes YouTube doesn't tell me I have them, but I do try to reply to all the comments. I'm slowing down because I'm actually here at the Axis. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you for that comment because uh, my eyes have seen quite a lot of amazing things and I am truly grateful. And I'm grateful for you guys watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm going to say goodbye now and sign off and I uh, hope you enjoyed the trip and um, we'll see you next time. If you guys like my videos, please, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you get notifications. And if you want to see uh, all the gear that I use on my trips um, and get information about me and all my adventures you can check out my website at camperchristina.com. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Made it! Yay! I learned my lessons as I go. When I finished the Twinkle Lake Loop, I never had lunch. And I didn't make my lunch before I started driving. And then I was starving, like, for hours. I have snacks in the car. I always keep snacks in the car for when I get out. A couple of different bags of chips and granola bars and stuff. But, uh... I needed some substantial food, so just making my tuna wrap on the hood of my car before I head out, and uh, that way I'll have something in my belly until I can find food. <laughs>